Welcome to the Referrals Podcast, the show designed to help everyone from the solopreneur to the Fortune 500 company win the referral game. If you want to build a company with an army of ambassadors and raving fans who speak highly of you and refer you willingly, you are in the right place. Let's meet your hosts, Chris Angel and Michael Mayer. Welcome back, everybody. It's another episode of the Referrals Podcast. I'm your host, Chris Angel, here with your host, like always, Michael J. Mayer, and our guest today, Roger Savvy. That's right, Savvy. The gentleman is Savvy. He is Savvy. <laughs> so good. He is. Uh, what, a, what a lottery you won with that name, Roger Savvy. Yeah, what a great name. And more well, efficient than the wrong spelling of S-A-V-V-Y, right? S-A- Why have two words, that's just, you know, that's in, just uh, two letters of B and when we can only have one, right? S-A-V-Y. So, is so S-A-V-Y, it's easy. It's very clean, very right? clean. Roger, that's welcome awesome. to the show. Chris, thank you so very much. It's so fun to be here with you and Michael. And my parents said to me, Roger, you won first prize in the lottery of life. You were given the last name of Savvy with one V. Love it. (laughs) I love it. I feel like we've won the lottery today having you on. I've been looking forward to this for, for quite some time. And, uh, I, you know, a big shout out to the listeners and, and people who have downloaded referrals podcast. You've made us number one and new and no, noteworthy. You've awesome. made us number one in real estate. You've made us number one in several categories wow. because of your downloads. And because you don't want to hear about people necessarily, you want to hear about referrals, how to get strategy, how to, how to, how to get more referrals, how to get more business, how to get more relationships and better relationships how to get more money, how to get more business. And, yes. and uh, you're coming for the referrals. And, and uh, welcome to everybody that's newer to the show uh, because you're in for a real treat today with Roger Savvy. He is literally the Tony Robbins of the mortgage world. And uh, he, he is uh, a speaker within that organization. And uh, what a great, great honor it is to have you on today. Thank you, Roger. Michael, you, your, your introduction just makes me feel a little humbled and filled with humility. Thank you. I'm so proud to be with you and Chris today. Awesome. G- give me some backstory because I don't know you, Roger. You and I are meeting for the first time right now. But right. I mean, M- Michael goes on about the Tony Robbins of real estate and my mind goes to all sorts of different things. Like what, so tell us all like kind of what is it that you do? Do you do mortgages? Like what is, what do you do? Right. Well, I, I'm very proud to be Official title is Executive Vice President of Strategic Partner Relationships with Pinnacle Home Loans. That doesn't mean anything to anybody. What does mean something to someone is that I am the ambassador of optimism. Mm -hmm. I ensure that my loan originators and my realtors have something substantial to talk about, how they can add value to each other, how they bring generosity to each other, respect to each other, have compassion for each other, and elevate the conversation that goes way beyond rate sheets and donuts. And that's (laughs) what I do. And so when I joined Pinnacle in um, 2015 down here in the Bay Area, we were an 11 million a month company. And now five years later, we're an 80 to $100 million a month company. And only one thing has changed, adding massive value first to strategic partners. And I think that's the big thing here is, is that like, the, this is referrals podcast, right? So A, Roger is one of the most referred speakers, especially on the West Coast, right? And all over. And the second thing is, is he teaches the, the loan originators and the mortgage professionals within his company how to get more referrals. His focus is teaching that. So, yep. so what a great perspective here is he's extremely referable and he's also teaching people referable. So he's got all of these case studies and examples and, and people who are going out and doing the strategy. He's kind of leveraged the learning of this. And, and so he teaches it even more fervently. And, and I, I will tell you, I love the whole give massive value first side of this, right? It, uh, you know, generosity generation at work. <laughs> And uh, I think it'd be great to kind of go into like, you know, in today's world, it's hard to stand out, yeah. you know, is, is there's so much noise out there that we have been geared and almost trained to ignore it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. And you are a master at getting professionals noticed to the point where it's like, hey, don't ignore me. And the thing is, is you can say, don't ignore me all the time and people will ignore you. You need to be noticeable. You need to be talk about a bowl, 
right? Remarkable. So how do you, how do you preface that or how do you teach that uh, out in your, in your market centers and the places that you go? Right. Michael, and thank you again. And just before I answer that question, I have to thank you for how you have taught me over the years about the generosity generation and the seven levels of communication. You are very much part of who I am and I continue to evolve as a speaker and inspirational person, because I've decided that I haven't learned at all. There's always something more to be grateful about. So thank you. That upward spiral of life has always, always inspired me. I thank you for that. So to answer your question, in 1975, the average attention span of an American was about 15 to 20 minutes. Today, Michael, it's five seconds and dropping. We have the attention span of a goldfish. And for that reason, no one is listening. In the old days, our parents, if they wanted to study up on something, we went to the library. We cracked a book. We listened to a podcast, maybe. We listened to the radio. We, um, we studied. We opened the encyclopedia. Today, it doesn't work like that. The information is coming into us whether we like it or not. It's a savage blood sport for our brain, and they're winning, and we love it in some strange way. So it's, as it's coming at us, the ability to focus has gone away. It's like a muscle at the gym which doesn't get used anymore. The focus muscle has atrophied. So the number one headwind that we all face in real estate and in lending is the amount of distraction of the goldfish. Number two, if I was to just step outside my office and just throw a Frisbee gently, I'll hit five realtors. <laughs> and this way, I'll hit five loan officers. Yeah. In other words, there's so many of us all trying to do the same thing. Life has us on this little hamster wheel running flat out, all trying to do the same thing. So the art of differentiating ourselves is just not front and center in our mind. So we're all just doing the same thing. And that makes us mediocre and average. And again, we don't get listened to. So distraction, headwind number one. The amount of competition and lack of differentiation, number two. And number three, well, all realtors are the same. Just pick one who'll do it for the lowest price, commoditization. Mm. And that's the same for the loan officers. Just shop them until you get the lowest price. So mm -hmm. distraction, competition, and commoditization, Michael and Chris, are the three headwinds mm. that are keeping us dumbed down and making sure that we're being ignored. It's beautiful. How, so, so how do we... Oh, go ahead, Chris. Well, I was just going to say, like, I, I see that all the time. And I remember as a real estate agent and I was a team leader for five years, I remember like a lot of it, was, like how agents looked to lenders was, well, can you buy my, can you buy my ads? Can you buy my flyers? Can you like give me money and I'll maybe consider working with you? But how, that feels like an old school way. And it sounds like what you're up to is creating richer conversations that have more value. How, how do we, how do we break these headwinds? How do we, how do we, how, what do we do? Right. Exactly right. Again, Chris, great questions. I, I decided uh, as my approach to talking to my realtors and loan originators, and it's really important, I can't be everything to everybody. That 80-20 principle works across the board. So I choose to invest in those who wish to invest in themselves. And that's a crowbar separation for me just trying to be everything to everybody. As soon as I recognize there are people that truly wish to change their status in life and be heard and be measured. Those are the ones that I zero in on with you know, strategic precision. And to answer your question, Chris, you remember when you went to college, hmm. you would be in the lecture theater and in would come the professor at nine o'clock. He'd put his portfolio down on the lectern and he would begin to preach, begin to speak. He didn't care whether you were listening or not. Didn't care. Yeah. He got paid to speak from nine to 10, whether it's uh, Thomas Hardy's Far From the Maddening Crowd. He'll talk about Bathsheba Everdeen for 20 minutes and it doesn't matter. Right. It was bedlam in the theater. Mm. Now contrast that, Chris and Mike, when you go and see your primary care physician, 
You get triaged by the nurse, you get put in the little room, and you wait. And you can hear the dulcet tones of your doctor talking next door. And next minute, you hear some scratching noises at the door because why? He's looking at your chart. He's starting to find out about you. And then the door opens and he smiles with crow's feet as he walks towards you. And he says, Roger, so good to see you. I haven't seen you for the longest time. What brings you here? And then suddenly he's locked in on me. Great eye contact, smiling, nodding saying, do you mind if I take a note, Roger? That's so interesting. Tell me about your parents. Tell me about your siblings. And so he makes it all about me. Mm. And when I leave in 10 minutes, the only, I've only got 10 minutes, I feel I have bonded with somebody in the universe. Somebody understood me. Somebody heard me seven levels deep. Mm. So to answer your question, I don't see myself as a professor in real estate or in lending. I see myself as a primary care physician. I'm going to make it all about you and I'm going to go seven levels deep and I'm going to have a charm offensive on you. And I'm going to find out all about you because I am a doctor of real estate or a doctor of real estate, of, of lending, not a professor. Mm. It's easy to be professorial and make a cerebral arguments much more difficult to wrap that with the emotion and promotion and move air to the heart. That's how I begin. A charm offensive. I love it. Yeah. I love that. What do you say to that, Michael? What do you say to what, well, how does that land over there? First and foremost, I've used the example from the stage before of, I feel like I'm a heart surgeon, mm -hmm. right? I mm -hmm. cure calloused hearts mm -hmm. and salespeople forever have had to callous their heart to do the strategies that they've been taught. Cold calling, door knocking. You have to callous your heart from all the rejection you're gonna get and all the, the, the arrows that are gonna be shot to you, right? And uh, I, I help cure calloused hearts. We're gonna, we're gonna smooth the callous out. We're gonna actually let your heart shine and, and let your heart be out there and, and you know, emotions are cool and, and that kind of thing. So I, I, love, the, I love the primary physician uh, type of analogy and the and the, the heart uh, heart surgeon type of analogy and that's exactly how people have to be is is they have to have this concept of you know I'm going to build this relationship one on one in a one on one I mean you're at a doctor's uh, appointment why don't they just go out into the uh, into the, the the lobby and go Michael hey looks here you looks like you got a pimple on your butt. Yep. And you're really worried about it. And uh, maybe we should talk about this. Classy. You don't have those conversations in a big group. They have those conversations yeah. one on one. It shows the power of the one on one. People are going to reveal to you and reveal in a one on one far more than they'd ever reveal in a, in a group setting if there's just one more in the room. Right. So, then, so yeah. Go ahead. And, and go ahead. on the, the last thing is I want to go into differentiation because uh, I, I understand, I mean, uh, we talk about, I mean, actually Roger's kind of solution for all three of those, the beauty of it is the same thing. Like one thing kind of solves the distraction, the differentiation and the commoditization issues. Right. And, and it's one of those where, you know, the differentiation and the, the being in a competitive environment uh, is, is such, I mean, in Kansas city or Atlanta, you can literally like throw a rock. You can't throw a rock without hitting a realtor, yeah. right? Or at least that's what I told the, the judge. And, <laughs> and, <laughs> and so it's one of those where, I mean, nowadays there's more, I mean, we're gonna nearing 2 million realtors, right? And, and in the loan world, there, it's finally to the point where we used to say, well, there's enough for everybody. In the loan world, there's not enough for everybody, yep. right? There's not, there's not enough loans being done. And with the I buyer, mm -hmm. the I buyer, is is not just a competitor for the realtor in fact it's not as much a competitor for the realtor as it is a competitor for the lender yeah right so we need to be able to to a get noticed quit getting ignored uh, as he said b we have to win the competition and and c we we've got to be in a position where we're not commoditized right we're not yeah. i buyer we're not just like here's your price buy it retail go and and go right right so, so Roger, what are you teaching right now strategically, right? That, that allows the realtors and lenders to, to stand out, to, to, to get noticed in a world where ignore me, 
is is honestly it's the de facto right it's the it's the baseline absolutely. the status quo is ignore everything yep right absolutely right so michael to answer that question specifically with ai and blockchain and the disruptors coming the machines do things so very well they can fly an airplane across the united states in the middle of a storm at night and landed on a little atoll in this middle of the Atlantic Ocean better than a human can do it. It can keep premature babies alive better than we can, count calories better than we can, pick out faces in a crowd better than we can, do an industrial weld in a factory better than we can. So much they can do. Here's what they can't do, and this is what you've always taught me. Machines cannot build relationships. They cannot build relationships, and it is the moat that will always ensure that if you decide to differentiate yourself by becoming so intensely human that you cannot be replaced by a machine. In other words, of course, screen time is important. FaceTime and going seven levels deep is everything we need to know. It's everything we need to know. So the concept of me getting in front of a real estate agent and teaching my loan originators to say, you know, it's my intention to work with uh, high end real estate agents like yourself, but the only way for me to do that is to add massive value. And rather than me guessing what you want, would you allow me, would you grant me 20 minutes to interview you to find out what you want? Is it not better that you tell me what you want rather than I guess what you want? And so I've discovered that I, should, I don't go to the top realtor because they've already got their team in place. They've already got their team and it's very difficult to disrupt that. Mm. However, when I speak to the managing broker, I say, please tell me who in your office has Eye of the Tiger, whose lights are on early, lights are on late. They're destined for greatness, and the team is not yet formed. That's the one I zone in on, and with huge humility, ask them to grant me 20 minutes to do a needs analysis or a gap analysis, where I find out where they are now, and where would they like to be? And I make sure I endeavor not to solve it there and then. I stay in the investigation mode, in the charm mode. I keep asking questions. And when they give me an answer, ask questions based upon their answer. Here's what happens to that 20 minutes, Michael and Chris. It suddenly turns into two hours because they feel heard and they just unbridle themselves. They let them know. Some of the more emotional ones cry because they've never been spoken to and heard. They haven't voiced their opinions with someone who's listened with such intentness for a long time. At the end of the session, which is only maybe, it was only going to be five questions in 20 minutes. It ends up being 20 questions of which I've got them all mapped out. I then say to them, thank you for sharing this with me. I'm going to go back to my office and I'm going to pull a task force together and we are going to brainstorm based upon your answers what we can bring to you. You won't hear from me again if I've got nothing for you because I don't intend to waste your time. And I go back and I literally do pull the task force together. Somebody from operations, somebody from production, somebody from underwriting. I've got an enormous amount of systems I bring to the table and we do come up with maybe the perfect ad for them to attract an assistant. Maybe it's a grammar test and a real estate math test they can put their assistant through to make sure they're being well represented while they're out in the field. Maybe it's a system for FISBOs or expireds or open houses or landlords who are kicking their uh, tenants out or other state investors that own property here. Mm. I don't care what it is. I got something for you, Mr. Realtor. And I'm not going to give it all to you because I'll cut myself out of the system. I give it to you. Let's try this. And can I hold you accountable to that? And because of that, the bond that is now formed between the realtor and my loan officer at my side is enhanced way beyond hmm. rate sheets and donuts. That's, that's differentiation. And you have like a generosity system, essentially. It, it's, it's, it's get in front of them. 
right? We're not going to go after maybe the, the, the super duper superstar, right? We're going to go for the rookie of the year, right? Uh, or the individual top agent who's looking to maybe start growing his team, right? Or, or her is looking to grow her team. And, and so at that point, we're going to do a quote unquote needs analysis or a uh, wants analysis or a hopes analysis or a value analysis, right? And, and so you're going to have a series of questions and then uh, you're going to take that back and then that's where you're going to uh, deliver the massive value back to them, right? That's exactly right. And I've discovered that should one truly ask all the questions, clearly state what the objective is. It takes 24 hours to 36 hours and the realtor is calling me already saying, you got any results from the task force? You got anything to, to share? Because they were so interested that there was another group of people in an office far away from theirs that was going to sit down and have them in mind as the central focus. Wouldn't it be great if we all had a board of advisors, right? And what you're doing is you're becoming the de facto board of advisors for this agent who needs a board of advisors. They, they need someone who's looking out for them, challenging them, asking the right questions, and uh, becomes that de facto board of advisors, almost to the point where you can meet quarterly with the agent and, and give them advice and ask them questions around their business and what they're doing the next quarter to, uh, to be successful, right? I feel like so, what's so good about this is you've got the balance between if you were just coming in and, and listening, you could do that. But without the tactical strategy, it would it would feel uh, doughy. It would feel sugary. And on the flip side, if you just came in with strategy and tactics, you would miss the heart and the, the thing that moves the soul. And this, so this is a great balance between empathy, understanding, being seen. Uh, paired up with strategy and things that actually somebody could do something with. And I love this combination of these two worlds um, to make it, to make the impression, to make the, the differentiation. Let's get ready for referrals. In the red corner, we have the average agent working by advertising, learning on the fly, no systems, no profit, and no clients. And in the blue corner, we have what could be you, the profitable agent working by referral, loving life and loving their clients. Take your business to the next level and go to www.callwithcoach.com and set up your free referral coaching session. Go now, change your business forever. www.callwithcoach.com. Chris, absolutely right. And for years and years, I'm quite sure realtors have become desensitized mm -hmm. and ignore you when, you when they hear, I'd really like to earn your business. <laughs> they must have heard that a million times. At yeah. some point, you've got to put some meat on the bones. Yes, At some absolutely. point, you've got to focus, do your homework. Mm -hmm. And something, Chris, that I learned from Michael, it was mentioned in his book, only in a fleeting glance, was something called Dunbar's number. Mm. And Michael, with your permission, if I could transition to that, I've discovered that Michael mentioned this guy called Robin Dunbar, Chris, mm -hmm. who happens to be chair and professor of anthropology at Oxford University in the United Kingdom. And this guy is prolific in his, his uh, scientific papers, is well-published author. And here's what he said. The maximum amount of people you can have a meaningful relationship with at any one time is 150. <laughs> that is Dunbar's number. And if you look at his scientific study, um, this, the at maximum is 270 on the high side, 110 on the low side, but the scattering is 150. So in general, it's 150. So this is something immediately I can bring to a real estate agent or a client. Tell me what you're doing with your database. Mm. Oh, well, uh, I'm sending them a newsletter and a recipe. Already I can hear the error <laughs> because they have not found out their 150, their special little 150, which Michael calls, not your database, mm. your own private gated community and how do you choose that 150 if they've ever entrusted you with their money in the past 
and or are great ambassadors or advocates of yours. If you put the 150, that 150 aside, the rest can get the CRM, the newsletter and the recipe, but this 150 gets your personalized attention every single day, Chris, mm. in your planner, because you only do what's in your planner, otherwise it doesn't exist. From 9.30 to 10 or 10 to 11, you focus on your 150, maybe only uh, six a day. Um, Two emails, two voicemails, two personalized notes. That's six people done. The next day, another two emails, two voicemails, two personalized notes. That's 12 people done now for the last two days. And you keep going till you get to the end of the 150, and then you cycle back to the beginning. Mm -hmm. Coming back to your question, Chris, when you look at a realtor, and you teach them about Dunbar's number, the energy that they've created in the past that they are ignoring at their peril. Mm. And you teach them how to, for a little bit of time every day, work on their 150. Adding to that takes 21 days to 30 days to form a habit. That's mm -hmm. good. Mm -hmm. But 90 to 120 days for you to begin to feel the rewards of that momentum. Mm. There's the compound effect going on in the background, but you can't feel it. It's yeah. imperceptible until about day 120. So most of my realtor colleagues don't quit, Chris. They, they don't fail. They simply quit too mm -hmm. soon. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that is a specific answer. If I teach them how to work Dunbar's number, I've already set them free. So good. That is so, so good. Yeah. yeah. We got to get a bigger neocortex, right? I mean, that Professor Robert Dunbar just literally said all communities should be about 150. And there are companies out there who build 150 person units, like small companies within the company based on, on Dunbar's number yes. and the size of our neocortex, the size of the part of the brain that makes us human mm -hmm. is it limits us to about 150 meaningful, emotional, powerful relationships. Now it doesn't mean we don't, I mean, we, people have relationships with millions of people, you know, dotted line or, or slightly shaded in relationships, but for the bold, triple bold, equal sign bold uh, relationships, we can only really have 150 of those. And it is, it is freeing, as, as Roger was saying, it is freeing when you narrow down all the people in the world to 150 that you're gonna let in, that you're gonna have in your gated community and you're gonna pour into. And like you said, sometimes the pouring into them, it's slow to react, but we've also had people where they pour into them, give massive value first, and they literally get referrals before they've even delivered the second part of the value. Like I'm sure Roger has mortgage professionals who have done the interview, right? Have done the 20 questions or the five questions that grow. And then before they even get back with the strategic plan, that person says, you know what? I have a referral for you. Simply because you can add value by listening. Mm. You know, they oh, listen, my they add value. Yep. How amazing. Sometimes after doing the interview, I, I go back to the task force and discover that while listening for pleasure and listening for pain, I didn't come up with anything to help them. And I go back and tell them that. And literally I get to hear, you know what, Roger, maybe my existing lender is taking me for granted. <laughs> they never bothered to even ask me. They just yeah. took the business. Thank you for trying. Mm. And in return, this is what it is. So you're right. Absolutely right. That's, that's powerful. I, I know there's a lot of people that still compete on trying to buy flyers, to buy their way into a relationship with a realtor. Oh, um, and and, and it, I, I even did this. Like when I was an agent, I actually ended up only working with the person who I felt like not only got me, but made me look really good with my clients. And if some other lender had come along and said, I'll, I'll pay for whatever, didn't matter. I don't care what you're gonna buy. You can't reproduce what this person is doing for me and how they know me. I think that's- Absolutely powerful. right, Chris. Absolutely. You know, Michael has often used the phrase for his books and his presentations, how to go from relationships to referrals without having to speak to a stranger. Mm -hmm. And 
I realized while teaching Dunbar's number, Chris, when I was really nice to that 150 and truly add massive value first, and it could literally be, mm. I don't speak to you enough and I could kick myself that I don't speak to you. Please hold me accountable. You crossed my mind last night and I'm going to make sure I never not speak to you again. That's often as simple as that to get back in the flow with mm. people, or you recommend something to them, or you have a frog conversation, mm. family, recreation, occupation, and goals. Just keep it going. Mm -hmm. But here's the important point. Each one of those 150, Chris, mm. each one of them has a Dunbar's number. So when you are yeah. really good to tier one, you get access to tier two, which is 22 and a half thousand people, 150 multiplied by 150, which are just waiting for you because you are nice to tier one. When Michael taught me this, it was an aha moment, which made my soul exalt. Yep. It opened up my eyes. The math of it is amazing, right? Yep. It's 150 you have in your, in your community. They all know 150. You have a city at your fingertips, 22,500 people at your fingertips. And it, I mean, that's a lot of people to refer. That's compelling right? math. Either refer, yeah. or, I mean, that is the power of yeah. with the events and the door prizes and the door prize entry forms that we do is that they, everyone knows someone, right? Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. not only that, but they're also gonna refer themselves sometimes. That's the power of the me in the, yes. in the door prize entry form is they can either refer someone else or they can say, I, I'm interested in buying, selling, or investing in real estate. And people are always amazed at how many referrals they get using these strategies. And I'm just like, no, that's, that's the math of it. Nobody's done the math of it, right? Mm -hmm. I happen to have a math background. Roger has a math background. It, mm -hmm. it's, and, it, and it's like, Roger and I are always like, why are you surprised? <laughs> you know, you're, we're like yeah. expecting it. You know, we're surprised yeah. if it doesn't work, you know? Yeah. And, and I'll yeah. tell you, Roger, Rod, you know, Roger's been very kind to me. Right. With, with a lot of the, you know, I, he learned from, I've learned a ton from Roger as well. And it's one of those where, you know, there's this thing called sales swagger. Right. And so Roger, why don't you, why don't you go into like describe, I mean, what, what we, I have to tell you the number one uh, failure of salespeople in general, maybe even entrepreneurs in general, business owners is uh, they're not confident enough. Right. And, and so they need some sales swagger, right? So, so, so talk a little bit about how you've developed, not just mortgage professionals, but also real estate agents to have more sales swagger. You, you got it, Michael. Absolutely right. And that is a concept that you can't read about at real estate school or in a, in a, in a sales book. You'll hear you've got to develop confidence, but you're absolutely right. Developing what I call natural personal power, that feeling that is you are assertive, but not yet aggressive. It's when you know what you are saying, it's a little alluring, almost a little attractive. And here's how it goes. Learn to speak one third slower. Learn to, that your brain can hear what's coming out of your mouth so that you don't overpromise that it's not just streaming consciousness. And when that training of speaking one third slower begins to hit with you, you suddenly realize less is more. People get to hear you. They get an opportunity to ask you questions and you wrestle control of the conversation. Mm -hmm. Not only were you prepared, but you learned to speak one third slower, make good eye contact, nod, paraphrase and do not be scared to talk about money or push back on the note on what a client is saying to you. In other words, challenging what the client says is very, is very alluring. When a client makes a sweeping random statement to you rather than go, Oh yes, yes, I understand. So help me understand how you came to that fact. Hmm. And what brought you to that decision? Suddenly making them justify their viewpoint mm -hmm. makes you look very powerful, especially if you're speaking one third slower, if you have an accent, even more so, but speak one third slower, mm 
Stand with your legs slightly apart, arms open, and enjoy the person in front of you. Let them see that you're not letting them go, that you're not looking down at your, at your uh, groin, smiling, <laughs> which is what most people are doing. Right. Enjoy the person. Smile with crow's feet. It's these little things that slowly build up your persona, your natural personal power. And that concept of one-third slower is everything. Mm-hmm. Michael, when I was in Georgia with you, and I never took it off again, is this black bracelet. See? I never take it off. Mm -hmm. And I look down at the person in front of me and I think, how am I going to treat this person with gratitude? Because today matters. Mm -hmm. I've got no control over yesterday. It's gone. Tomorrow is as dark as tonight is going to be. All I've got is now. Today matters. And this moment, this person in front of me is going to get whole body listening. Mm -hmm. I'm here for you and you are it they will know that they are the center of the universe at that second. That builds natural personal power. So good. I feel like we're talking to uh, Tony Robbins meets Eckhart Tolle meets, uh, uh, I, I don't know, like it's super cool because it's, diff- it's, it's different than the, the advice you normally hear, right? Nobody's ever told me to speak. Hang on. Nobody has ever <laughs> told me to speak one third slower Right. <laughs> it's so good. You know, you know who the person – yeah, go, go ahead. No, no, no. I, it's so good. You go. The person that first gave me that suggestion was a guy named Gary Goldstein. Hmm. And Gary Goldstein is the producer of Julia Roberts. What was the big movie she did? Uh, uh, Pretty, Pretty Woman. Woman. Pretty Woman. And his, his suggestion – it, and, and, you know, I was getting ready to do an interview with a guy named William Shatner, right? Which is, which is a little awkward because people say we look alike. So, uh, so it was like looking in the mirror when I'm up there. And, and we, what's funny is we actually wore that same outfit. I actually had to go change. I literally had on a black jacket. Well, of course, with a black shirt. Believe it or not. I know that's hard to believe. But I went back, put on a, a white shirt with a tie because he was already wearing literally this outfit. Yeah. And uh, I just remembered what Gary Goldstein said about slow down. Slow yeah. down what you say. Pause. And you're the one who's thinking that you're speaking too slow. But everybody else is mm. thinking that you're speaking normally. Absolutely so right. that, and, and he also said, make sure that you enunciate. And Roger, you enunciate very, very well. Well, thank you. I, I appreciate that. And so every, every single day, uh, waking up, and Michael, again, this is your stuff that you taught me. The first thing I do is drink a glass of water. <laughs> Just drink the glass of water. I'm dehydrated from a night's sleep. I'm determined I'm going to kickstart that reticular activator. And everything that is important to me suddenly is highlighted swing my legs out of bed, say something nice to my beautiful wife and make my side of the bed, get myself in peak state, move my body for 20 minutes because motion equals emotion. I refuse to solve any problems until after I've moved my body, I'm in a higher mental order. Stay away from the pop tarts, eat something healthy, read 10 pages of my book, get on this beast, which is next to me here called my, uh, my Bowflex M7, sweat for 15, 20 minutes. And it is just at that point, I can ask who in my Dunbar's 150 today's life am I going to change? Whose life am I going to enhance? So those attraction magnets are on from the yeah. moment I leave my house in the morning. Mm. Those are all things from the miracle morning, from Michael. It is, it's become my DNA of who I am. So good. Yeah. I love it. Love I, I want to kind of wrap this with, um, I think a lot of people would get this intellectually. And I think emotionally they would feel that the importance of this type of an approach. What I want to know from you with all your years of experience in this is then where, when people buy in intellectually and they buy in emotionally, they still then get stopped somewhere. Because if we just look at the amount of people that don't follow through on the things they're inspired by, what I want to know from you is like, where, what have you seen stops people 
even after they bought in with their head and their heart, what stops people from actually going all in on this approach that you teach? And how do they move past that? And we can wrap with that. Yeah. Uh, you know, it, it so varies from person to person, Chris. But here's what I've noticed. Either it's, I don't fully understand what Roger was saying, so I won't do anything. Mm -hmm. Or um, I'm not comfortable talking to people about their profession. I feel like I'm telling them what to do, so I won't do anything. Mm -hmm. Or tomorrow's, next week's another week. I'll start then. They push it off until yeah. next week. Uh -huh. Or you know what? I've got enough money in the bank account. Uh, I just don't feel like doing this. Yeah. So somehow there has to be a breakdown before there's a breakthrough. And so just like when I teach people with the telephone, we have an acronym for picking up the telephone in our company. It's called PUFF, P-U-F-F. -F. It stands for pick up the flipping phone. Yeah. And so I, with those that wish to invest in themselves, I stand with them and I encourage them and I get them in peak state and then I let them loose. And they suddenly realized it wasn't as difficult as they thought they were going to, it was going to be. And then I hold them accountable. And I, need, I intend, not need or want, I intend and I will and I do hold them accountable for 21 days. Mm -hmm. Then they have in the swing of it. Getting yourself a coach, getting yourself an accountability partner is much better than crying victim or putting up invisible fences in your brain or thinking that you're different, you suddenly realize that there's a whole world waiting for you behind the door or behind your phone, just waiting for you. If you could get past your own invisible fence. I just had this aha moment of um, oftentimes life reflects back to us. The thing like if, if what, if what I'm feeling is you're ignoring me, a lot of times we're actually ignoring the very things that we could be doing, right? Like we could be picking up our phone. You just gave an entirely beautiful interview of all the things that emotionally and strategically we can do and that people will listen to this podcast episode, move on with their day and then ignore the thing that inspired their heart and soul, right? Like they're, they're and yet then we go out in the world and like, why do other people ignore me? It's because we, and, and we have this own condition in us where we're ignoring the very things that could serve us and help us. And then we go out, but then we go out to the world and actually demand that the world doesn't, that the, that the world doesn't ignore me. Yes. That's right. Anyway. Exactly right. Exactly right. Beautifully summed up. Well, that's great stuff. Uh, Roger, if people want to reach out to you, people want to learn more about what you do with Pinnacle. They, they feel like this was inspiring and they want to just, uh, you know, drink from the, uh, the ether of Roger, Roger right. Savvy. How do people connect with you? Well, well, and thank you. I've also got a little coaching company. It's called Roger That. It's a savvy company. <laughs> and um, I, I talk to people who wish to invest in themselves. So whether people call me on my cellular, which is 206-372-3859, or email me at savvy, my last name, savvyvoice at gmail.com. I am very responsive to those modes of communications. And no matter what, if I've got nothing for you, I'm still a good listener and we'll make a friend. Love it. So good. Love thank it. you, Roger. Thanks for being on the show. Michael, thank you. This episode, I would say our download is Referral Library. Mm -hmm. um, you guys can access Referral Library by going to referrallibrary.com. Um, Michael, anything you want to say to conclude? Yeah. So, you know, this was titled kind of don't ignore me. Right. Or if we flip it to the positive, like notice me. Right. Mm -hmm. And exactly what Chris was just saying is, is like, notice me, notice me, notice me. But it's amazing how often professional salespeople, businesses do things that aren't them to try to get noticed. Right. You want it's notice me, but, but the, the, what you're trying to get noticed with is not really you. Mm -hmm. Right. It's something ridiculous or it's something super uber colorful or something that isn't really you at all. They're not noticing you, yeah. right? They're noticing this more noise. And that's why it's not standing out is because you're just contributing to the no noise. What it needs to be is you, right? It needs to be you. It's, it's not, you know, they're not ignoring you. They're ignoring what is contributing to the noise. So, so if you want people to notice you, it has to be authentically 
you and and the way you become remarkable is is by giving massive value first generosity love appreciation and just pour into others and that is very very remarkable it's very noticeable you know back in how to win friends and influence people we all learned that you know it's not about being interesting if you really want to be interesting Mm. what you need to do is be interested Mm-hmm. Be interested in others, and all of a sudden you become interesting to others. But it, it starts. Here's the other thing: is that we talk. Everybody's talking about story, right? Story selling, story, and nobody gives a crap about your story. Nobody cares about your story. Nobody cares until what? Until you hear about their story, Excellent. and you care about their story, and you contribute value to their story and their history. Mm. And if you help their history and listen to their history and contribute to the future of their story, then all of a sudden they're going to listen to your story. They're going to no longer ignore you. In fact, you're going to become a vital part of their life. And that's how you go from being ignored to noticed is simply go from trying to be interesting to being interested. So good. Absolutely. good. Gentlemen, thank you so much. This was a powerful, powerful interview. Roger, great to have you on. Thank you for being here. Michael, great as always to see you. Until next time, take care. Thank you.